so welcome back fourth time and this uh, part basically which the we have done for the um, uh, regulatory body to convince that the this phages you know, can be given parenterally by intramuscular injection by iv injection intraperitoneal injection or anywhere and uh, for this we have taken the mice septicemia model and this study has been basically expanded over the period of 18 years and there are three four five papers which have come out of this on the animal models and uh, here we have just created the septicemia uh, against different bacteria like pseudomonas aeruginosa acinobacter baumeni and klebsiella pneumoniae they are the part of the escape organism which are very well are notoriously known for their drug resistance they are usually pan drug resistance many of the patients who are admitted to icu and then uh, they are having the infection with the bacteria which is not sensitive to even a single antibiotic available and then you just see watching the patient is dying in the icu uh, because of the septicemia so for that we are working and there are certain studies which has been done in 2017 it has been published but for your information we started this work in 2005 itself so i am showing some of the findings some of the things and uh, it may be a bit longer maybe it is crossing the 20 minutes but you bear with us so this is the story of the one person who uh, tom peterson who was visiting the they are the american citizens uh, egypt during holidays and uh, he developed suddenly food poisoning like symptoms and his wife uh, was uh, basically medical uh, psychologist or something like that was coming out and she is telling that my husband sneezed my hand to say he wanted to live then squeezed and then i found a way to save him she is telling about this and let us see what was this story the name of the that lady was stephanie stardy an infectious disease epidemiologist knew her husband tom peterson was desperately ill he was at that moment lying in a medically induced coma but it still came as a shock to hear that he was now expected to die because the infection was because uh, due to acinobacter baumeni which has resistant to almost all the available antibiotics so this uh, stephanie decided to flew her back to us where bacterophage therapy could have been given and let us see what has happened so doctors were quickly running out of way to keep the tom alive as deadly superbug rampages through his blood stream resistant to all antibiotics they had to offer he is the patient he is about 6 feet 4 inches tall person non medical person and has is suffering from the acinobacter baumeni septicemia which he acquired in the egypt the doctor said this is the worst infection on the planet stephanie next step was to approach the food and drug administration with the help of one of the tom's physician dr chip schoole of university of california san diego department of medicine which approved an experimental treatment on the compensated crown and fortunately i had also been in one of the research lab of san diego and this work was done there only in 2005 i was there 2004 and this is the scenario when the treatment was given with the bacterophages which are available to the military hospital of the american army and then uh, uh, it was given to him at several doses low doses and he survived and then this paper was uh, published uh, in antimicrobial agents and chemotherapy in 2017 and it was cited more than 600 times now so uh, before that we had already started working however they suggested the author suggested that many questions remain about the clinical potential of bacterophage therapy for serious mdr organism future studies should focus on delineating and optimizing safety safety is very important then pharmacokinetics then pharmacodynamics when the phages are getting eliminated how long they are staying there and where they are reaching multiplicity of the infection what dose should be given at particular different situation of the infection efficiency of bacterophages identification and development and mode of administration which route you have to apply and methodologies for monitoring the emergence of bacterophage resistance once therapy is initiated so you can see this uh, 
multiplicity of the infection and valency and efficiency of bacteriophages are very important and then optimizing safety i shall be telling you that uh, what we found in coming slides so in addition the impact of phage on biofilm and on the microbiome of the host is of interest as is how best to manage concomitant antimicrobial therapy so this fellow was having basically the um, lung infection due to the eosinophilic uh, bubonic the primary focus was lung and biofilm formation was there so it was only bacteriophages which could cure him otherwise he was going to die so let us see they suggested that the novel approach is required and before that we need to have clinical trials focusing on delineating the extent to which bacteriophage based therapy could be used on their own as last resort or as an adjunct to the traditional antibiotic so uh, we just wanted to see one aspect that the what is happening if we are injecting the bacteriophages and are there neutralizing antibodies are formed so we conducted one study in the rabbit model and we found that neutralizing antibodies are appearing only after 21 days of the administration of the bacteriophages intramuscularly so if in in acute infections so the neutralizing antibody are not the important factor so this is very encouraging the second study we did that we gave the oral uh, bacteriophage therapy in charles foster rats just to see that what are the immunological response and adverse effect and we found that oral administration was having almost no adverse effect in the rat model then uh, we published one paper and we this was on the bacteriophage therapy against pseudomonas cerevisiae susceptisemia and the finding at that time was there it was the initial study we did that we gave the very high doses of the bacteriophages 10 power 12 thinking that bacteriophage will go and kill the bacteria and then the mice will be saved but you see we were wrong at that time because optimization of the doses are very important so what we found that we when we gave the high doses at the um, early uh, hours of the infection that is before 6 hours and after 6 hours of the exposure to the bacteria there were too many deaths about 40 to 60% of the mice died and then uh, the same dose in part 12 when given 24 hour after the bacterial challenge they survived so it was very uh, surprising to us that uh, the bacteriophages as such should prevent the death and kill the bacteria but later on we found that the if the bacterial lysis is occurring suddenly this may lead to one problem that uh, sudden lysis Uh, may lead to the endotoxin release in huge amount and that the patient or the the host may not uh, come back and this endotoxemia may lead to the uh, shock and death so then what to do what to do so we found that there must be optimization of the doses so later on in this case only we reduced the dose from 10 power 12 and came down to 10 power 9 and then uh, the volume of the uh, dose was also reduced so we found some protection but still it was we were not sure that if it is protective uh, at after 24 hours why it is not protective at 6 hours so we took another study i'm not showing the i'm not going to the detail of these uh, graphs i shall be showing you some of the uh, uh, some of the um, videos later on and you can see that uh, Uh, if the in group one there was death that is six hour before and six hour later these two group one and group two, but after twelve hours simultaneous and twenty four hour there was no death. When we reduce the uh, dose of the bacteriophages, again you can see this was the original one. Uh, after six hours there was death, but when we reduce the doses volume say from one uh, hundred microliter to we came down to sixty, forty, and twenty. and then th there was protection so this pe uh, paper was published in indian journal of medical research in 2 2021 on the stenobacter baumeni and then in this case what we found that uh, when we came down 10 power 9 because 10 power 9 was preventing the death in the uh, case of pseudomonas cerevisiae here we found that when we were giving the 10 power 9 dose uh, there was some mortality after 12 hours and 24 hours but there was no mortality in case of 6 uh, hour uh, either way either side of the in injection so again we found that the, probably the doses should further be reduced so we just did that one 
and 10 power 9 was again giving the death. So we reduced it and we found that it was the 10 power 5 PFU per ml after 24 hour which was preventing the death. I, uh, this was effective at the early stage of the infection that is after uh, 6 hours of the uh, challenge of the bacteria and also after 24 hour after. So uh, this is the picture and then uh, we were not uh, sure that whether it is 10 power 5 will be effective at the early stage of the infection means simultaneously we are injecting the pseudomonas because prophylactic doses are important in the therapeutic uh, practice. So if you give the bacteria side by side, you are giving the phages, they are not causing any death in either of the situation, whether high dose or low dose is there. But uh, in certain cases, uh, uh, the higher doses of the bacteriophages are causing the death, death. And the cause of the death was because you, the bacteriophages are basically lysing the bacterial cell and cell wall is coming, is broken down. The uh, endotoxin basically lies in the gram-negative bacterial cell wall. So uh, the huge amount of the endotoxins are produced. So one of the anesthesi journal of the anesthesiology ma maintains that the as far as possible, if patient is in stage of septicemia where bacteria is, are just circulating in the blood, the antibiotics which are acting on the cell wall like penicillins, cephalosporins and monobactams should not be given because they are lysing the bacteria and cell wall endotoxins are coming out and patient may die uh, because of the endotoxin, not because of the bacterial infection as such. So that was the suggestion. That's why we tried to have the several doses and safe doses in any situation or any severity of the bacteremia. So we carried out another uh, um, experiment on Klebsiella pneumoniae. This was funded by Department of uh, Environmental Sciences under the uh, NMCG. Namami Gange project and we could complete in two years. The findings were very excellent and now we are confident that we can convince the uh, regulatory bodies that uh, you please permit us and these are the safe doses and we found here, I'm not going to the complication of this one. If you reduce the doses 10 power 4, 10 power 3 and 10 power 2, then it is not going to save the mice, challenge mice in any of the condition. But if you increase the number of doses, say 10 power 12, in the early stage of the infection, the mice were dying because of the sudden lysis uh, that is called as zone phenomena. Optimum number of the bacteria and optimum amount of the bacteriophages may lead to the sudden lysis of the bacteria and that, that may lead to the overload of the endotoxin. But if you are giving the small doses of the, co uh, the cocktail of the bacteriophages, and maybe you are giving the repeated doses as was done in case of the, uh, that, uh, that person from the US and then you monitor the vitals of the patient so probably there will be no death and we could found that this is the 10 power 5 PFU per mouse. It can be given safely after 24 hours of the bacterial challenge or it can also be given safely simultaneously or 6 hours after the bacterial challenge. And then we estimated the um, endotoxin release. You can see when we have given the 10 power 12 high doses in the early infection, you can see the, there is sudden increase in the interleukins. And then the and endotoxin also, if you are giving, the endotoxin is getting released more when you are giving the higher doses at the early stage of the infection. And in the, the 10 power 5, you can say PFU per ml, there is there was the rise, but it has came down and it remained lower. So it shows that the um, this uh, 10 power 5 PFU per ml may be safer and it can be used in the human being at the uh, different intervals. So what they say, they have also opened the center of innovative fast therapy and therapeutic at the University of California, San Diego, the first dedicated fast therapy center in North America. Part of their mission is to persuade people of the urgency of finding a solution to antibiotic resistance unless sometimes something is done Stephanie says one person will be dying of superbug infection every three seconds by 2050. So you see this red uh, fonted letter, this is why we started in India earlier and uh, I am not bo boasting but I would say that we are the only clinical people who are doing these experiments in the animal as well as the human model and we hope 
that the whole country is one day accepting this modality of the treatment and we can save you know, thousands of the life so but to be honest what stephanie says i was extremely embarrassed because i was really blind to this global threat the superbug crisis that had crept up on me so superbug is coming out this is being used in the poultry in the aquaculture system fishery and the um, as you see animal husbandry a lot of it, their antibiotics are in soil so all these bacteria and you know the concept of one health so those bacteria are coming to the human by just uh, creeping in through food and water to us and they are causing problem if the immunity has gone down by due to certain region maybe local or maybe systemic and they are causing the serious infection to us so uh, after the interesting story uh, created by stephanie uh, the study we have seen that the bacteriophage therapy can prevent and before that we have started uh, the bacteriophage therapy in septicemia since 2005 and we have conducted on pseudomonas aeruginosa and then up to that acinetobacter domini and we have recently completed the klebsiella pneumoniae septicemia just to decide what should be the optimum dose so what we did is just we decided the ld100 by giving different doses but i shall be showing you some of the limited slides so first slide i shall be showing you that uh, we got that this this dose 8 into 10 power 7 cfu per ml if given in the dose of 100 microliter intraperitoneally this led to the uh, to the uh, death of the mice within 48 hours you can see here so all of them died so it means we have started from the smaller dose in about 3 4 5 10 7 we found that this is leading the death to an in 48 hours all the mice so we took this ld100 and then we started experimenting with the smaller doses of the bacterial phase cocktail that was 10 power 3 per ml 100 microliter and first time we gave the, along with the bacterial uh, this um, challenge that is simultaneous dose and let us see what happened so you can see here 10 power 3 here this mice is looking a bit sick and then if you just if we did the recording 24 hour after and we can see the result here this is simultaneous this these two are looking very sick and then this 10 power 3 pfu per ml there is death these two are going to die it seems and three will be surviving and then ultimately after 96 hours you can see that three are surviving the rest died so 10 power 3 is not giving the full production 40% of them are dying so uh, then uh, we started doing the testing the 10 power 4 pfu per ml and we gave the uh, the uh, this productive challenge 6 uh, hour after the bacterial challenge and you can see this this uh, video has been recorded 12 hours later the after the bacteriophage challenge and you can see they are looking sick and then this slide is this video is 24 hour later prepared after 10 power 4 dose again they are looking sick and then this is 72 hours later 10 power 4 dose and you can see there is they are still looking sick and one one has no there are all five but they are looking sick let us see what is happening next so is still they are not recovered they are looking sick it means they this dose is not giving the protection and one of them died here here you can see so 20% mortality is there so 10 power 4 is not looking satisfactory then we started the treatment with the other this one and then we we started the therapy with the dose of higher dose that was 10 power 3 10 power 4 and now we started 10 power 12 and then we gave 6 hour after the bacterial challenge where we found that there was death after giving 10 power 4 so let's let us see this high dose of the bacteriophage is what they are doing so here you can see the recording has been done 12 hours after the bacterial challenge they are sick and then here in this case we have this is 24 hour after the 10 power 12 
and they are still sick but it seems that there is no death the third video after 72 hours and you can see there is death so 10 power 12 when you gave the higher dose that is not protective neither the smaller dose was effective or protective nor the uh, high dose when given around six hours of the infection so that was the story then uh, we decided to optimize the dose so, so we have seen that 10 power 2 10 power 3 10 power 4 and 10 power 12 PFU per ml of the bacteriophage count was not protecting and our previous uh, experience with the pseudomonas serigenosa we could see that the around 6 hours the higher doses were killing the mice yeah, if the bacteriophage you know, higher dose was given initial 6 hours and in acinetobacter vomoni we found that if the doses are small so there was death after 24 hour of the bacterial challenge so therefore we shifted to the uh, 10 power 5 pfu per ml and uh, then uh, that is that was the bacterial challenge was given 6 hour after the uh, bacterial challenge and this video has been prepared 12 hours later the uh, after the bacter bacteriophage given to this one and this is again a 24 hour after sorry so you can see this video they are quite well looking good and then you can see this is 48 hours after this one they are, there is no death and then again if you see after 72 hours the, this dose given there was no death they are all playful so they recovered so this 10 power 2, 3 and 4 were not protecting 10 power 12 was also not protecting at given at within 6 hour of the bacterial challenge but 10 power 5 was protecting so this is very important and then if you see uh, the uh, when we get the uh, bacteriophage uh, cocktail 6 hour before the bacterial challenge here the same thing what happened means as a prophylactic we, prophylaxis we gave and you can see this video has been prepared 12 hours later and then the next video is after 12 hours no death then 24 hours later this video has been prepared and they are all playful they have recovered no problem no death and then this is uh, 72 hours after the bacterial challenge and there is no death so this is interesting 6 hour before 6 hour later 10 power 5 per ml uh, bacteriophage count was quite protective and there was 100 percent protection so we then uh, took the another uh, um, experiment when we gave the bacterial challenge first and then 12 hours later we started the bacteriophage therapy this one so this video has been prepared 12 hour after the bacterial challenge and let us see what is happening so they are looking sick this is 24 hour after the bacterial challenge bacteriophage therapy given is still sick because 12 hour duration is a bit longer that's why the recovery is slow with the same dose there is seems to be a recovery there is no death at all and then after 72 hours you can see there is no death so this is the story with the it means before and after there is protection with this dose 10 power 5 so next we have given the sorry Hello? so it's it seems that 10 power 5 dose is uh, protecting when given simultaneously when given 6 hour before and when given 6 hour later and uh, also 12 hours later and I am not showing that video uh, when given 24 hours after the bacterial challenge then again there was protection by 10 power 5 and uh, you see if we are not giving these doses and with the uh, 8 into 10 power 7 uh, bacterial count CFU per ml bacterial count was killing all the 5 mice 10 power 5 was protecting when given simultaneous when given 6 hours before when given 6 hours later when given 6 12 hours later and when given 24 hour later to the bacterial challenge what was protecting so it could be concluded that the bacteriophages 
uh, dose should be optimized and if needed in human population if you are going to translate this animal experimentation the, we should take care that we may give the smaller repeated doses with the monitoring of the uh, patient's condition like blood pressure and the uh, and the uh, oxygen concentration as we are doing in the corona and uh, we can repeat the doses because human population we have got a lot of system by which we can monitor while in mice we cannot do it so it means the medium dose neither the smaller doses nor the largest doses are 100 percent protective optimum dose of bacteriophage cocktail can protect the patients from dying out of the drug resistance bacterial septicemia so this fourth uh, part of my lecture could show that with the continuous 15 years of our experiment that 10 power 5 pfu per ml given in repeated doses with the monitoring of the vitals of the patients might be successful so this is all about the vector phase therapy and septicemia model which till date we have done we are still working on the uti model and the pneumonia model so with this thank you so much